Hello and how are you? Welcome to this tutorial which we are still focusing on x-rays and in this case this shall be a final tutorial we shall work on x-rays to be able to complete the remaining part remember we had two objectives that we did not clear up we shall clear up them in this tutorial that's basically the dangers of x-rays and basically the uses of x-rays we shall also explain them so I'm your tutor Dave Joseph Adeli we shall begin with a quick word of prayer Father Lord in heaven we invite you in this session you being the greatest physicist teach us x-rays that we are able to understand Jesus name I pray Amen so basically so far so good we have been able to explain the production of x-rays we know the properties of x-rays we now are yet to know the dangers of x-rays and also explain their uses and we know how to also solve numerical problems involving x-rays so quickly to the two objectives that we need to do but before that let's begin with a very quick review of what we know so basically we know that x-rays are commonly produced by accelerating electrons through a potential difference or a voltage drop and that voltage drop is basically what builds up the electric field as we saw in cathode rays so when the electrons flow between the cathode to the anode and they are blocked by that anode in that process of producing cathode rays we end up producing x-rays so there is that voltage drop between and we saw how the step of voltage uh, applies in that particular case and directing them onto the target metal now an example of a good target metal um, here we have tungsten reason being uh, we use tungsten because it has a high melting point but on that tungsten we'll be able to coat it with a high uh, a material that has high uh, a lower work function to high work function a low work function that is for example barium oxide you have strontium oxide thorium oxide those are really good examples you saw them in cathode rays so just that's just as a wrap-up so the tungsten is used to as a it's because of the high melting point it has and the copper we also saw how copper comes in and the copper fins and everything i believe that comes as a good wrap-up so the incoming electrons release x-rays as they slow down in the target the x-ray photons now the term photons is basically a package it's basically used as a package for physicists we shall greatly appreciate what photons are in the next topic called uh photoelectric effect of which you shall see that in for example in light uh, let me use light because that's where we're going to look at it photo photo means light so in light these discrete amounts of energy are called photons that's basically a way of quantifying let me say so so there are packets or let me say so but we shall look at it in photoelectric energy and appreciate much of it with terms like quantum or quanta quanta is basically that package so basically the x-ray photons produced in this manner range in energy from near zero up to the energy of the electrons now x-rays are basically high frequency and have a high energy uh, uh, high energy electromagnetic rays and if you hear of high frequency you remember that the opposite occurs that is low wavelength next and they are undetectable by human senses you cannot detect them by human senses they are also very penetrating because they are used because of their nature that's basically their nature and that's why they are used in medical industry i've just given you a hint believe that you have ever heard of it they, are, they also cause low localized ionization then finally the gener generated when generated when when high energy electrons strike a metal target now let us quickly go to types of x-rays because this is where we need to derive some various parameters basically there are two types of x-rays namely one hard x-rays and number two soft x-rays let us discuss each, each of them separately hard x-rays are produced by fast moving electrons as a result of high accelerating voltage so basically if i have a high accelerating voltage the x-rays that we produce will be at a high velocity therefore bumping into that anode which is the block or the obstacle causing x-rays and when they cause x-rays the x-rays also have a high 
penetrating power. She also appreciates that with, with the next coming few statements here. So they have a very short wavelength and that's high penetrating power. That's what we have explained here. So they can penetrate the flesh but are absorbed by bones. This is one of the things you need to appreciate. They penetrate but are absorbed by bones. And if you notice, when you speak about absorbing the bones, it's very dangerous. Because when they absorb the bones, your bones tend to become very weak. With time, then it becomes a very dangerous thing. Let's go to soft X-rays. Soft X-rays is nice, the reverse. When we had hard rays, they were produced by high accelerating voltage. So in this case, we shall have low penetrating low accelerating voltage so ex soft x-rays are produced by electrons moving at relatively lower velocities than those that produce hard x-rays so they have less energy longer wavelengths hence penetrate the penetrating power compared uh, to x-rays is less it's very minimal one more thing that we need also to note is that these are what is used the soft x-rays are what are used for uh, the medical industry. I believe you have heard of that. So they are used to show malignant growth in tissues since they only penetrate soft flesh but are absorbed by such growths. If you have hard rays, they'll just pass through those growths and they'll not be able to detect anything. That's the only difference with the hard rays, hard x-rays. But if soft, soft x-rays, they'll penetrate soft flesh very slowly but when they reach the growth, they will be able to be absorbed by that growth. And when they are absorbed, it happens like a photographic, uh, like a picture. I believe this one was, we stressed, stressed it when we are speaking about X-rays, uh, the properties. And we note, we note that X-rays, when they will be able to be absorbed, what shall be observed now in the photographic film, I'm just saying this, but we shall explain it to you the uses of the X-rays. When they are absorbed, notice now there is a portion that shall not be able to be reflected in the photographic film. So that portion shall trace a dark region. And that dark region shall now tell the radiologist oh, that there is a malignant growth at this particular section. But now around that particular growth, the exit shall just penetrate through, through and be able to reflect on that particular photographic film. We, let, we shall discuss this more in detail in the users section. Now, we have just looked at soft rays and hard rays. Let us appreciate it much more in this summary. So increasing the tube of voltage, what is the basic thing or a high, extra high tension? Basically, increasing the high potential difference that is, uh, that is used to accelerate the electrons will give the average electron more energy when it hits the target energy in terms of what kinetic energy so in this case the quality of penetrating power is therefore correspondingly increased or directly proportionally increased now in this case we want to speak about quality of x-rays now after we have understood about the increase of the high x-ray tension or the voltage accelerating voltage being increased now in this case what does it affect with the quality of x-rays when you speak about quality of x-rays we are basically looking at the penetrating power, quality. How does it penetrate? So in this case, X-rays with high penetrability are termed as high quality or egg hard X-rays and those with low penetrability are of low quality and are so-called soft X-rays. As the energy of an X-ray beam is increased, the penetrability or quality of the X-ray beam is also increased. But something we need to note is that the soft X-rays are what are now used for the medical industry. Now, hard X-rays, in summary, have a high penetrating power, while soft X-rays have a low penetrating power. Now, what of increasing the current? How does it affect? Because now we have the voltage increase. How does it affect? How, do, how does the current now affect this particular process? Notice there's something called thermic emission that is affected. In this case, if you increase the current, the rate of thermic emission is also increased. So more electrons of same energy hit the target, more X-rays are produced, therefore the intensity increases. Not those very few very good summaries that we have here. 
Now let us look at the intensity or the quantity of X-rays. We have looked at the quality, now we are looking at quantity. Now the intensity of X-rays is controlled by the heating current. The greater the heating current, the greater the number of electrons produced, hence the more X-rays. So basically if you have the current flowing through the cathode, coming to the cathode and are quite, uh, they are quite under heating up the, car the cathode, causing a heating effect. Therefore, when the electrons are produced and the current is very high, a lot of electrons will be produced. So the quantity is increased, that is the intensity. And if it is low, therefore, the electrons produced are also low. So the strength or the quality, we have lo looked at that, the penetrability of the X-rays will, however, remain the same. So the strength of the X-rays depends on the speed of the electrons, which in turn depends on the accelerating potential between the cathode and the anode. This is what we have been stressing all along about these particular electromagnetic waves. Let us now quickly dive into uses of X-rays. One, we appreciate the first use of which is the greatest of all, but others are also used in this particular case. So we are going to discuss four uses in this level but there are still others that we need also to know. But in this case, let's get the four. With the time, we shall be able to learn of the others. One, in medicine, whereby we have radiography and radiotherapy, which have just hinted of what happens. Number two, in the industry, we shall look at how they are used in industries, detecting flaws in metals and such like things. Number three, in crystallography, we shall look at the arrangement of crystals and how they be able to figure out the arrangement of those crystals and then finally in security measures this is very common also if you come somewhere they have to screen you so that they may detect are uh, you coming into safe hands with safe and innocent safe, uh, safe things so let's quickly dive to the first one in medicine x-rays are used in hospitals and medical research centers for diagnosis and treatment of diseases the diagnosis involves a process known as X-ray imaging, of which I spoke about the, the photoelectric photographic film, of which it is what detects the flaw or the problem in the growth. So in which X-rays are allowed to cast a shadow on the photographic film, and that shadow is what now they detect as the growth or the injury somewhere. So examination of the photographic film reveals injury or the infection of the tissue. This is because of the difference of absorption of X-rays by different tissues of the body. So for example, a broken limb for example, when X-rayed will reveal the nature of the bone, the nature of the bone. Now notice if you have a, a fractured leg, what will happen? Let me just quickly give you a hint of what happens so that you may become a good doctor in future if you are earning to be one. So if I have a broken bone here, we have spoken that the bones absorb X-rays. So when they'll be coming, and they come to this particular bone, they'll be coming with quite a number. So the bones will absorb the X-rays. If they absorb, there's a shadow casted on the photographic plate. So in this case, assuming that I have my shadow here, it shall reveal such a shadow of the bone what of this other bone the same thing it shall also show a shadow it shall not be a good beer but it's just explaining what it happened and those that shall pass through the fracture they shall pass and diffract let me use that term so here you shall just see an open space meaning the, radio the radiologist will be able to notice that there is a problem here, it's a fracture. So such is what shall happen. Or if it's a tissue that has absorbed that malignant growth, the cancer growth, for example, if you had a cancer growth like this, it shall show a shadow on that photographic film. And all along, all around the photographic film, it shall be as usual or the way it has just been, shall not have any change unless an obstacle is placed. So let's basically continue. Diagnosis of softer tissues such as lungs, liver, spleen, the heart, kidneys, and other internal growth organs with the conventional X-ray equipment are not accurate enough. Hence, there's a special equipment that is required because you may end up having 
I'm a, a very large Manila growth shown on the photographic film, which will end up de- telling you that this particular lung is infected with cancer. And when you, with the, in the real sense, it's not that it's infected with cancer, but the X-ray was that particular lung, for example, was absorbed, absorbed those particular rays. So basically, we now introduce a very new, ta- a very new equipment, though with the same properties, using the X-rays, but now it's computerized. We have a computer tomography, which is known in lots as a CT scan. So the computer tomography employs a special X-ray equipment and computer processing of image data taken from different angles around the body to show cross sections of body tissue and organs. Now the CT imaging can show with greater clarity special types of tissue, e.g. lung, bone, and blood vessels. In this case now it, the computer itself shall tell you instead of you literally coming to view that photographic film. So this therefore makes it possible for radiologists to diagnose different cancers including those of lung, liver and pancreas. They are more accurate. CT imaging can also quickly reveal injuries to the liver, spleen, kidneys and other internal organs of people who have had accidents. So such is very, very important. You have heard of CT, 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 CT scan or what? So I believe, I believe right now you can be able now to tell somebody it's a computer tomography. Now X-rays are also used for treatment of tumors. In this regard, CT examinations are used to plan and properly administer radiation treatment for tumors. Now something I would like you to note here. During the X-ray photography, a point source of X-ray is needed. Point source, so it produces the X-rays at a specific point. We shall look at the dangers of X-rays so that you may appreciate why we are saying a point source. If they are numerous, it's terrible. This is because although X-rays travel in straight lines, and like light, they cannot be focused by lenses. So because they cannot be focused, and we shall look at also the damages they cause, it's important for us to use a point source. So for X-rays to produce shadows with sharp edges, the rays must come from a point source. This also gives us another point. If they are also numerous, they shall end up forming very funny uh, drawings. You shall find that this one draws at a particular angle. It uh, reflects an image at a particular angle. And this one reflects another image. So you'll end up having the same image, yes, but reflected at different angles causing a very blurred image that shall not be easy to be able to to interpret so the ct scan gives this readily x-rays are also produced to detect foreign objects in body for example pieces of metal if swallowed and other things so i don't know if those people whom we term as magicians or witchcrafts or whatever we call them and they tell you that you have bottles or metals in your body and be able to remove them. I don't know if they use X-rays. I don't know. Now, let's look at in industry. How are they used? X-rays are used to detect flaws in metal castings and welding so that they may look at their efficiency. So you may notice that if somebody creates a chair using welding process or casting process, to be able to uh, know the efficiency of that chair, how long it may last, they may want to focus on the joints that you created. And by looking at the joints through X-rays, they shall be able to determine its efficiency. So in this process, we use X-rays. So the radiation is also used to sterilize surgical equipments before packaging. That's also another thing. So if you want to kill those manilian growths, use X-rays. Another thing, you need crystallography. That's the third use. X-rays are used to study the crystal structure of substances. So, if you have somebody telling about the structure of, for example, sodium hydroxide, they studied it under X-rays. That's the main possibility. So, the regular arrangement of atoms within a crystal produces diffraction effects when X-rays are passed through it. Now, this is because a crystal has regularly arranged atomic planes which are very close together, making it act like a diffraction grating. So the spacing of the planes are in the order of wavelengths of X-rays. So you may, if you find, for example, they are in this particular format and then very big, 
they shall tell you that there's a particular wavelength that should be detected here and that will be able to tell the particular researcher about the crystal structure of that particular element or that particular compound is being is researching about so an analysis of the diffraction pattern can therefore reveal detailed information on the structure of the crystal quickly to the final use which is in security in security now you may have ha looked at such a table in the airport if you are uh, going to board a plane you'll have to put your bags on a conveyor belt and they'll be screened here and that screen these are the, these are the person will be able to notice what is inside that bag and if there's something that shall be able to absorb that x-ray it shall show an image in his computer and he'll be able to tell you that there's something in this bag that you have hidden that you need to tell us so it shall reflect in this monitor that he has so basically that's how we use it in security or in various structures find that they'll tell you you have to cross through a screening point they basically look at the, they basically use this particular machine to be able to know of what you are you carrying are you carrying dangerous weapons that can cause danger to humanity so to be able to restrain that they use an x-ray transmitter let us look at the dangers of x-rays before that let us appreciate the efficiency of x-rays now x-rays most of the kinetic energy is converted into heat that's in the process of producing the x-rays Generally, more than 99% of kinetic energy of projectile electrons is converted to thermal energy, but less than 1% available for production of X radiation. In this sense, therefore, it tells us that the X-ray machine is very is a very inefficient apparatus. But because of the technological advancement it has done, though with those huge number of inefficiency, it's still used because there's no other that has been developed to be able to surpass what we have currently. Dangers of X-ray. Number one, excessive exposure of living tissue to X-rays is dangerous as the radiations can cause damage or kill the cells. Number two, since the effect of exposure is cumulative, it is important that exposure be limited to a short period as necessary and as few times as possible in one's lifetime so it's not a very good thing to always use exits though if though how efficient they are they cause damage to live body cells x-ray machines have a protective lead shell shield to protect the operators from x from stray radiation so in this case if you are the one being screened the other person the radiologist does not need to be screened so he'll he, he, he needs to be able to be protected so they use what called lead shields the lead material so the lead blocks those particular x-rays we shall look greater into this in the topic radiation and shall be able to appreciate much of this now the machines are operated in rooms that have concrete walls because they absorb the leak any leaking radiation now how do x-rays cause harm you may have wondered about that because I'm speaking about harm, harm, harming the body cells and you kind of probably may be surprised. I've heard of this, yes, but I need to know how they happen. So low intensity x-rays, which are basically what we call soft x-rays, can damage living cells and cause cancer. So people who work in x-rays take measures to protect themselves from exposure. So when those soft x-rays, because they take long to penetrate through you, they weaken those body cells and the moment they weaken them because of ionization and that's how they be able, are able to able to kill those body cells so, so not only the malignant growths are also destroyed but also your body cells are also not spared now this radiologist they wear a film badge and stand behind special screens when x-ray machine is switched on so that they may be able to absorb any stray x-rays or any leaking x-rays notice that each machine on earth is not perfect so high intensity x-rays will kill living cells now at this point and the juncture we shall be able to call off the topic x-rays so success in your preparations may god bless you abundantly now we shall be able to keep in touch 
so that you may be well with eggs race. May God bless you abundantly.